I want you to hit me as hard as you can. We've had Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Van Damme, and Seagal here on Real Action. But it's about time we got to the most gloriously insane action star of them all, Jackie Chan. <laughs> An international superstar longer than most of us have been alive. It wasn't until 1995's ridiculously over the top Rumble in the Bronx that Chan broke out into the American market with his unique daredevil style that often ended with him in the hospital. Steven Seagal ain't got nothing on that. Can I laugh in your face? To get an idea of just how insane Rumble in the Bronx is, all you need to know is that at one point Chan's character Hong Kong cop Kyung tries to outrun a hovercraft, but just before he's smushed, he tosses away a baby he had just rescued like she was a sack of potatoes. What the F? This type of mad action was the norm for Chan back in Hong Kong, but it had never been done here in the States, and we were shook. While the title might be Rumble in the Bronx, it only takes a fraction of a second to realize, hey, this ain't no Bronx anybody has ever seen before. That's because it's actually Vancouver. Director Stanley Tong does his best to try and convince you otherwise with the occasional bit of stock footage, but nah, that's not happening. The ridiculous plot has Chan's Kyung visiting the Bronx to attend his favorite Uncle Bill's wedding only to get sidetracked by a biker gang that destroys his bodega. The shot gets sold to the ambitious but soon to be exasperated Elaine, played by the late great Hong Kong superstar Anita Muley. But the attacks keep getting worse, turning the store into what looks like a food fight had taken place inside of a hurricane. Never have so many bags of potato chips been harmed in a single movie. Kyung, who we know is a really a badass because I mean, look at the way he beats up this Makawara. Takes on the gangs himself in a series of bizarre and comical confrontations. Some lost diamonds enter the picture, which brings in some mobbed up goons, and naturally the oversized guy with the ponytail, because there's always at least one in every 90s action flick. Toss in an irritatingly precocious disabled kid and a love interest half Kyung's age, and you've got a pretty good idea of what Chan thought American moviegoers wanted to see. To be fair, he wasn't wrong. Rumble in the Bronx's importance not only to Chan's career, but the representation of Asian actors in America can't be understated. Sure, it's a wildly enjoyable, zany flick in the Jackie Chan style, but it wasn't easy. Chan was already 41 years old at this time and had put his body on the line in dozens of movies. But breaking into Hollywood was tough and attempts to do so by taking bit parts in 1981's Cannonball Run or 1985's buddy cop flick The Protector were failures. Chan was determined to come to the United States as a leading man to rival the likes of Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Norris and others, and refused to settle for less. When Stallone offered him the Simon Phoenix role in Demolition Man, he turned it down. Jesus, as awesome as that turned out with Wesley Snipes, how great could it have been with Jackie Chan? I don't know if there's more of a pure Jackie Chan movie than Rumble in the Bronx. Sure, some of his native stuff has crazier stunts, but here we see the full scope of his cheerful, buoyant, nice guy personality. And the hyper stylized action is pretty wild. Whether he's sliding around on furniture to avoid the baddies, batting them over the head with a refrigerator door, or leaping 28 feet from building to building without a freaking harness. Yeah. That guy has lost his damn mind. Roger Ebert famously compared Chan's fancy footwork to that of Fred Astaire, 
as it seemed like he was literally dancing around his opponents with ease. If only he could have sung in the rain too. While the fights are played up for laughs, they do take a serious turn at one point in a scene that's always stuck with me. After being chased all around the city, Kyung is finally cornered in an alley, those damn Vancouver streets, where the gang proceeds to batter up glass bottle after glass bottle at his face, leaving him bloodied and unconscious. On the one hand, this is a cool way to protect Chan's image by not having him lose in a straight up fight, but it's also just a really novel way of taking down the hero. I mean, where did they get all of those bottles? Raid or recycling center? The film was directed by Stanley Tong, who had worked with Chan before on Police Story 3 and Spin Off Once a Cop. They would go on to team up a few more times afterwards, but have reconnected of late with 2020's Vanguard and Kung Fu Yoga in 2017. Tong is another example of a Hong Kong filmmaker who tried to crack into Hollywood in the 90s. But unlike John Woo, he never found any real success outside of Rumble in the Bronx. His only English language effort because Rumble features some truly horrendous dubbing, was 1997's Mr. Magoo with Leslie Nielsen, and look, the less said about that, the better. Tong had a feeling for Chan's chaotic style, capturing better than almost any other director the way he fluidly slides from one nuts maneuver to the next. That hideout battle, in which Kyung takes on the entire gang all by himself, shows director and star in perfect cinematic harmony. That entire sequence, with Chan wedging himself into and out of one doomed predicament after another, left my young jaw on the floor. I imagine it did the same to millions of other boys who were seeing Chan for the first time. If you watch too closely, you'll find a ton of goofs and continuity errors. Also, cultural representation is absolutely atrocious, with many of the characters little more than racial stereotypes. I mean. Who's the Native American dude with the head feather? Come on. It was a simpler time, and it sort of adds to the movie's goofy charm. The best of the Rumble in the Bronx did what it was designed to do. The film opened number one at the US box office, earning $32 million, which isn't bad for an R-rated action movie with a non-Hollywood actor. Chan's legend would grow from there, along with his influence on American cinema. He would have other box office smashes here, including the Rush Hour and Shanghai Noon franchises. But more importantly, Chan has become something of a cultural icon it's hard to imagine a time when we didn't know Jackie Chan existed, and we're all very lucky that Rumble in the Bronx introduced us to his brilliance. Rumble in the Bronx gets 8 out of 10 Stallones. Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel, tell your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all of your support.